Oh, I just realized I had my. Told each flag is a separate design instead of putting it. I just, one I just, controller. I just realized I was streaming without my audio turned on, cause I do that for the prime streams. Um. Anyways, let me re-say everything that has been said in the past ten minutes. Um. Uh. First off, uh, I started off the stream by saying my mom keeps watching these. So hi, mom. I love you. And hi, wait, yeah. Mom. Um, amazing. And the other thing is, we were talking about that ga that game controller with too many lines on it. Like it, it looks I, nice, but also it's if they just sold, if they would have sold thing. like every designs like a, a separate controller instead, I would have been far more into that. Because then I can get both the lesbian and the trans <laughs> like, thing and have like two separate controllers and be like, oh, more money for Xbox. That's yeah, right. yeah. Rainbow capitalism, yeah. maybe. Oh, actually, it's a permanent addition. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Also, I'm going to show off that stage before it crashes this time. Oh, yeah. Is Josh in background? Probably. Anyways, so this is the stage I've been working on. Um... Um, you may notice... Uh, spinning moon. That was from a previous stream. I did not need to mention that. I am just very proud of myself. Spinning donut. It's amazing. It's the square, but not a square. Then there is this section over here, which we'll go through. Nah, go to Twitch. I'm feeling in the Twitch sort of mood. Usually. I hate it. Yeah, and so this platform just kind of keeps going, and it goes through walls, so you have to like move around the different spots of the platform. It's a pretty neat idea, I think. Uh, I think I think like somebody on the dev team said it kind of looks like unprofessional when it goes through a wall, but I don't know. It makes for a good platforming, so I kind of. I do kind of agree with that. Kind of looks unprofessional, but. I kind of, yeah, I kind of don't care. It's a cool idea, and I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> Maybe instead of you had, like, things coming off the walls, instead of, like, it going through the actual walls? Nah. And then there is this section, which I used all ten of my brain cells to come up with. So, you have two of the moon guys, but now they're stretched out. And you gotta do a little bit of this. Uh, smiley face for smiley face purposes. That, that's a thing. And then we also have this, that's um, what we're gonna be working on today back here. Um, you just go through these donut things, fountain, go up these platforms. Um, there's a linked pair of graffiti right here. Oh my gosh, he can take my hat while I am in uh, movement mode. That's cool. Um, but yeah, that linked pair, it works. It's actually a very strict timer, but you know, we're all gamers here, so. You just gotta, we can game. just gotta game, yeah. Oh, and I came up with a evil blue coin, and I am not changing this, even if people get really confused, because it's just cool. You have to like get the blue coin midair. It's pretty awesome. Um, Do you have to reset every time you fail. That? No, it, it respawns. Okay, yeah. Good. And then, uh, the last mission, um, is this one, and I haven't finished this one yet, because I had a better idea for a mission to do here, but then it kind of just didn't work out, so I just, uh, resulted to the plan B of every ROM hacker, uh, just make an obstacle course that's kind of precise, and, 
Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Um, but there's one other little mission that is here that I probably already showed off in that previous YouTube video, but, um... You kind of go on these, uh, logs, and I increased the size of the peg, and this guy pushes you back. You can get crushed. You can get crushed. But yeah, that's, that's kind of that mission, so... It's, it's pretty cool, if I do say so myself. So that is what I have been working on since the last time I streamed, which was ages ago. Um, that, and I also have a full-time job for the summer, so that's cool. Yippee! But yeah, I only got it like about an hour until I want to like go to bed or something, so. I can't remember what the distance on the triple jump here was. Like, is that a good distance? I forget. You know, really smart of me to close out of that emulator. I think I'm gonna go to bed. Wow, lame. Shh. But I need a co-commentator. You wouldn't go to bed. I, I'm tired. But you're not that tired, are you? I mean, I guess I could stay up, but I mean... Nah, it's okay. Go to bed if you need to. Okay. I'll probably- Josh I'll will probably come back in a minute anyways. Alright, I'll see y'all later. Yeah. Good night. Alright, see ya. Goodbye. Bye. Looks like I'm the co commentator Yeah, how's now. it going, Purple? You got any good topics of conversation besides the new Sonic game? Ha 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 ha. He he he. Um, I don't care about the new Sonic game, yeah. so I wasn't gonna bring it up. I figured it's a good topic of conversation um, for a bit. Um, I actually, yeah, I guess so. I actually kind of like it. It looked pretty fun. But for me, the only yeah, thing, okay. the, for me, the only thing I really need to have fun with the game though is just like good movement and exploration. If it has like exploration and good mm -hmm. movement, I'm pretty happy most of the time. And I saw exploration and I saw okay movement. I wouldn't even say good; it was just kind of like okay. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's a shame they can't have like rolling physics into this game. So how did your run go in Metroid Prime? Oh, it was, um, yeah, so yesterday, me and, um, uh, my buddy Lance, we were doing a run of Metroid Prime Randomizer, because we are entered in a, uh, multi-world, uh, tournament for it, and, um, our seed yesterday... It was like baby's first seed. It was like really breezy, easy, and fun. Which is a nice change of pace from the cancerous um, last couple seeds we got beforehand. Because the seed generation gets really wacky when you start randomizing the elevators. So. Oh, I put the platform here just to. Oh my gosh, I am such an idiot. Hey Tempo, how's it going? Oh yo, Tempo finally joined chat. Hey. Nice. I was gonna say, needed co-commentators. Oh, actually, you know what? You're the guy to ask. Hey. You're you're the guy to ask, but your opinion on the new Sonic game, live and in person, on the Twitch channel. First, I wanted to say, um, the featured article on the cutting room floor today is Mario Kart Wii. Uh, okay. Um, now, what are you asking? Oh, yeah. What's your opinion on the new Sonic game? Because I've seen it over t text chat, but I am uploading this to YouTube, so... We gotta, gotta talk about the spicy, mean, um, spicy hedgehog drama. You mean Sonic Frontiers? Yes, the new Sonic game. Um, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you something that sums up what I think of the entire situation. And then once you're done watching it, then I'll tell you what I personally think. 
Is it a meme? Check the IP, no mic. Uh, joke moon. moment, joke moment again. Yeah. Oh, you know what? This is gonna get DMCA'd. Hold up. We ah. Uh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Thank you, Purple. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I saw I saw that posted in the other Sunshine channel, but. Yeah, but. That's something. Cause to me, I think the, I, it looks fun to me. Um, though the movement looks like very not Sonic-y, except for like, like a couple moments where he like jumps off of a ramp after some like boost ring, that kind of looks Sonic-y, but the rest of it's just kind of like, you know, you know, you know sa says the guy who thinks that Sonic Roboblast 2 is peak sonic -ish. It's pretty it's funny because good, honestly. Because the funny thing was, I was actually on um, Sonic Retro and watching some Sonic YouTubers and stuff and everything, and they were actually comparing Sonic Roboblast 2 to Sonic Frontiers, and even they were saying, Sonic Roboblast 2 is really good, but it is not the ideal 3D Sonic experience. Far, far from it, so... I don't know, Wade. <laughs> I think they just have a bad opinion. That's all I'll say. That's that's classic bad opinion. Our, our SRB2 is pretty good. Even for like 3D Sonic, yeah. it's much better than a lot of Sega's 3D Sonic, so that's for sure. How about something we can agree on? That uh, Sonic Advance 3 is pretty good. Yes, that is actually a really good game. But, uh, you, said, you said Sonic Advance 3. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty good game. See, a buddy I know at um the the Canton Trade Days, he was selling a copy of Sonic Advance 3 for 20 bucks, and you, you know I think that's fair. Um. And this one person comes up and he's looking at it, and uh, I just turn to him and I'm like, "Dude, you need to buy that. That is a very good game, well worth the money." And then my buddy's like, "Yeah, and it's like infinitely replayable too." <laughs> mm -hmm. That's cool. Did he buy it? Um, I honestly don't know. Keep us updated. Because the thing that takes, like, uh, Sonic Advance 3 from, like, average Sonic game to, like, really good Sonic game is the fact that you just have, like, so many characters and all the stupid abilities. And I, I, I didn't even know about half of them until Rhythm started telling me about them, so... Yeah. So Tempo, did you see the moon uh, obstacle course? Huh? Like the uh, Wade stack two moons on top of each other, and you're supposed oh, to. Oh like, yeah, go it's and it's it's, it's a nice a nice level them. design idea I came up with on the spot. So. Mm -hmm. So when are you gonna work at the mail room, Tempo? Um, soon. <laughs> so wait, you're working at a mail room? Everything's been going really well so far, but you know when you're working for the government, it's a long process to get set up. True. Wait, what are you gonna do there? Oh, what do you mean? At the mail room, what do you get? What do you do? Oh, well, I'm actually going. I'm a uh. Retail, uh, uh, sorry, I'm a rule carrier associate 
which means I'll basically be uh, driving around to the rural areas outside of a uh, big city, Tyler, uh, delivering mail to people who live on like the backcountry roads and stuff. Okay. All in all, it's gonna be like a, a very easy job. So basically, just driving for hours. Yeah, but I like driving for hours. Cool. I, I, I am too bad at driving to probably be any good at those type of jobs. I can have Google Maps on and I'll still miss my turn. Yo, Piclopedia, the best song. Alright, Rhythm, what do you think the chances are that that the new Sonic game will actually end up being good and everybody's just wrong? Because mm. there's always the small chance that it's actually fine and it just looks bad. These these questions are too much brain power for me right now. I had a really bad day at work. It's okay. I thought it'd be a fun. I what thought happened? it'd be fun for you to talk about that. You like Sonic. Do you Sorry. Want to talk about what I just can't tonight. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, Wade. Okay. Sonic does not absorb my life enough to the point that it can literally give me energy like it does from some people. Uh, Alright. Just because I'm evil, and I'm evil. <sighs> Tighten that gap. Sorry, TJ had Lego Star Wars blaring on the TV. I had to go turn it off before I lose my mind. Mm -hmm. You wanna talk about something, Tempo? Oh. Do you want to, like, talk about anything in particular? Like, about your day, or just not? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, if it's anything personal, probably not now since I'm streaming it to Twitch, but... I mean, this isn't exactly the first stream where we talked about something personal. Well, I mean, I privated that video, so... Okay. <laughs> I found, I found a little bit of motivation earlier to get back to working on the Ratatouille stuff, so... That's how I'm going to be spending my time. I thought you said you were, like, done with it. Or is there something else you forgot? No, I, fi I finished the Giga article, but I still got to do the two smaller ones. What are the two smaller ones about? So the Giga article was about, um, like, uh, the, the halfway developed prototype. And then the two sm the smallest one is going to be about mm. the the really really early prototype, and then the medium sized one will be about the final game itself. Cool. Because there's leftover stuff in the final game. Uh, yep. Mm. What are you doing right now, Wade? Uh, working on a stage. I would have I would have streamed like a bit earlier, but me and Josh were finishing a nice let's play of a hat in time, so Alright, hold on, let me go let me go to Twitch and pull up your stream. Uh C is how you self ping yourself. Middle mouse button is how uh -oh. you ping Somebody's whatever you're got audio coming in. That was it. Hold on. Ah. Hold on. There we are. I'm watching you now. Why? Yep, it's why. Okay.
and we are an evil ROM hacker who Whoa. has no mercy on the planet. I want I want to finish the Ratatouille stuff so much so that way I could just solely squarely focus on getting back to Super Mario Eclipse. Bro, you say that, but the you, first thing you say that, but you still haven't the done first the first coloring on... on my stage in like five months. Bro, I told you that was gonna come after I got Air to Rock into a presentable state. Yeah, but I didn't expect that to take five months. Ha, 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 well, he, he, he. I was actually working on Air to Rock literally the night that the Ratatouille stuff dropped, and it's been about um three months now, I think, since that started. Or maybe I can't count. Um, no, it's been about two and a half months. Um, See, so yeah, not five months, but trust me, I want to get back to Super Mario Eclipse. I want to stop writing articles and you know, go back to building you know, fun stages and Blender and all you know, that. You, but... you know, you could just do that and then come back to Rat later. No, because I want I want to get this done now while I still have it all fresh on my mind and I know what I need to do when I have everything set up and ready to go for it. All right. Ooh, actually, better idea than what I was just about to do. Make this long. But, no, trust me, Wade, my game plan is um, to get Air to Rock to a presentable state, um, upload a YouTube video on it, because I haven't uploaded anything to YouTube in ages, and then uh, literally the water park was the very next thing. And I'm honestly really excited to get to it, because the last thing that I was doing before the Ratatouille stuff showed up was I was Vertex painting Air to Rock. So, and it's like, I love Vertex painting, so it's like, I'm very excited to do that for the, uh... Um... For the water park. Did we ever come up with, a like, an official name for that, by the way? Yeah, um, I... It was, um... Frick, what was it? Ah, I can't remember, but I did come up with something. There's the culprit. Okay. What is it? I, f I remember I named the. I wait. I think I named the model file after the name I was gonna give it. Oh yeah, it's Piogia Park, or however you pronounce that. I don't even know how you pronounce that. Where is it? You don't know how to pronounce your name. Yeah, it was just because because all the stage names in Sunshine, for those who aren't aware, are just in a different language. Um, so you had I just took Italian. the stage name and then Italianed it. Give it the give it good old Italianize it. Give it a good old Doofenshmirtz and Italianize it, and uh, yeah. I wonder what it is in English. It's a platform and it exists. And now you can put a red coin over there. Also, you didn't put the name of the water park in the Trello board. Uh, as long as it says water park, it's probably water fine. Park. Yeah, it just says water park.
Sunshine. Sunshine just really loves taking its sweet time to load. Ooh. Ooh. Buggy audio. It's okay, we'll make the test quick. Already noticing some issues. Some really obvious issues. Oh yeah, um, I could go rail editor real quick. Um, so the idea for this, like, um, section I'm working on before I gave up on it, um, was, and you can see I left the rail here a little bit, I guess, so, yeah, it's still there. I was gonna have, like, water, and this, there's gonna be the death collision, there's gonna be water, and the water is gonna, like, rise and lower, and, like, you'd have to get red coins by swimming before the water lowered you into death collision and stuff and it was really cool um but sunshine is kind of cringe and just like the game crashed if you put the damaging collision underwater um so there's a fun fact for y'all if you put the like noki bay like damaging water as oh. well it would just like crash it was really funky but yeah so since since that didn't work out, we're just going with a uh, generic um, Kaizo platforming stuff. Oh yeah, another fun thing about the bin editor that I hope Josh fixes for Junior's Toolbox, but the more objects you have in a stage, it just kind of chugs. Like, the frame rate just drops. And it's kind of annoying. Not like a big deal, but like, you know, minor annoyance. Let's try that again.
Oh wait, Rhythm, do you know where Josh said he ran off to? Uh, nope. Okay, cool. Because he always says what he does before he leaves, but my brain is always gonna forget that within like two seconds anyways. If I remember correctly, he's doing dishes. Oh, yeah, that sounds accurate. How, like, I gotta imagine you guys get a lot of dishes if it takes this long. I feel like that could go lower still. Because I'm mean. Let's see how that works. Also, these death walls look like they needed to be bit higher. Hello. Oh, he's back! Magic. Hi. I know, right? Welcome back. How was the dishes? The dishes were plentiful. Yeah, so like, how many dishes do you guys have, like, if it takes you that long? Um... I mean, generally, each night, there's <sighs> like... 20 cups. 10 to 15 plates. Jeez. Handfuls of silverware, pots and pans, and other bullshit. Okay, yeah. I mean, and you got quite a big family, so. Uh -huh. Yeah.
the gay controller. <laughs> yeah, I see you found the... Yeah. Ambry was bringing it up that, like, there was a lot of flags. If you can even call it that. Because at that point, it's just lines. There's no longer any flags. Yeah. He was also pointing out the uh, comment and how Xbox was responding to the meme comments. And said I mean, that uh, Xbox way, chose my name today. The way I see it, really no one asked for it. There's no reason for a game company to start getting political about shit with their controllers. I mean, I don't think it really does anything, so I mean, more power to them. Yeah, um... Well, it's not that it does anything, it's just that they didn't need to do it in the first place, and now they're causing a lot of turbulence, because there's going to be the people who are like, oh, gay, bad, and then there's going to be the people who are like, oh, gay, good, and then everybody's just going to start fighting over it, and Xbox is going to have a lot of unnecessary drama in their community. I mean, I guess, Whereas they I, guess I guess I just think if the people who are getting in drama are the people who are like homophobic then i don't really care if they don't want to buy xbox shit that's just their loss for being homophobic i mean it would also be non-homophobic people getting in the drama too aid probably yeah because of course it, it's generally well it's not even just homophobic people who started it. it's also just people who aren't a fan of seeing the shit everywhere and then those so they may not necessarily be homophobic they just feel like seeing it everywhere and then they say something Dude, about it a lot like those comments and then that starts stuff tj get out and so um no you're not playing it in here the point is that it's not always just flatline oh it's just the homophobes are we going to play Crush? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's finally figured it out. He's not gonna play at all. Yeah. Are we gonna play? Not, probably not tonight, TJ, Dang, because why? I ended up taking longer than I thought, and then I still got to do the, the show, and it's midnight. Dang, I like how it's only midnight for you. It's already a bit past that for me. Why is it that it, it doesn't want to kill me when I, I bonk my head on it, but I spawn myself with myself already a little bit into it and it does want to kill me. So I guess I can't do that. <laughs> hmm. That's cool. Well, I can always do the thing um, I did with Sunburn's course. Where I just... You mean the punchers? No. I mean, I did that okay. too, but... Um... There's, um... There's one section in that, like, uh, Kaizo stage I made in Sunburn. That nobody seemed to wrap their brain around. And I feel like repeating that would just be... Nice. And cool. And fun. People would like that. Which one was it? Was it the castle in the sky one, or is that? Oh a different no, no, one? no, no! Th it's the one that's made of only objects, aka the really bad one that nobody oh. likes, except Bouncy Boy for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. He liked it. That's cool. You got one person who liked it. Well, I mean, if you know that only one person likes your stage, you know it's bad. <laughs> that's that's how you know the stage is bad.
Boots and cats and boots and cats. Bro, I'm gonna make the I'm gonna make the player use their whole five brain cells on this one. Oh boy. I just realized my mic is delayed for some reason. Great. We're just gonna do that Man. idea again, but this time the wall's gonna be thin, so it won't be a problem. But maybe I want it to be a problem. No, no, no. You don't want to have a problem. Otherwise, you'd have to you fix. Sure otherwise, that? you'd have to fix things. You see, me like every other human, I like to just sweep things under my rug. Okay, that's the best strategy, really. Uh-huh. Why? GG. You know what I think? I think you're lying to yourself again. You think he wants problems? Yes. I think so, too. Indeed. Yeah. I wouldn't have problems if it wasn't for darn water collision being janky and making me do the world's laziest level design. But it'll still be fun because it's platforming. Ladies and gentlemen, that has been the random noises from Josh segment of this stream. <laughs> yeah. Alright. You know, it can't be a stream without random noises from Josh. Oh, hey, Big Tree Cannon. Sorry, I haven't been, uh... I haven't been reading. I didn't see that. Uh, uh, they can do whatever they want. <laughs> As long as it's not uh, illegal. It's much less than virtue signaling, I think, more than it just makes them more money. They make more money by virtue signaling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's less about them actually having virtue and wanting to signal it, and more just them wanting to make more money, I think. But yeah. Seems like that was kind of what you implied there, so. At least with the second half of it. Um, gotta think of more cool ways to use Flood. Actually, you know, I should probably test this to make sure this is all pretty good. Good. Actually, why don't I? Yeah, personally, I just I get exhausted whenever companies start virtue signaling pride like crazy. 
Mm -hmm. Because it's gonna go away in a month. Honestly, just the thought of, uh, the thought of holidays in general just makes me tired. <laughs> oh, having to see family? Cringe. Haha. <laughs> just kidding, I like my family. Although, I mean, I've heard so many people say they hate, like, holidays because they have, like, bad family members and... This like literally never happened to me once, so I, I should count my blessings there. I'll never count my blessings. Yeah, math is overrated. Don't count your blessings, kids. Exactly. Finally, somebody who gets me. Children. Word of wisdom. Avoid wisdom.
Hmm, that is a bit too far. Anyways, what walls are you talking about? These walls, the ones you're at right now. These ones? Or these ones? Yeah. Yeah, these, like, those walls. Okay. So, what if you punched, like, the moon platform, like, you punched holes that were in the shape of the moon platform, and the moon platform, like, a bunch of moon platforms went through that hole, so it would block Mario from trying to, like, platform around that area as an obstacle. Uh, I can't put moon platforms on rails. They just kind of spin. Uh, yeah. They do the oogie boogie. <laughs> what about star platforms? Same difference. Uh. You know, sometimes you just kind of walk into it and it doesn't kill you? That was kind of weird. Because Sunshine's an amazing game. Yeah, oh, we yeah. Perfect. Oh, actually, um, in the Sunshine at Discord uh, earlier this week, somebody posted a a photo of uh, like something Sonic. Sonic. Well, yeah, that too. <laughs> um, somebody posted a photo of um some like um Super Mario Broth post where he was like, uh. Sunshine is a pro-social game that increased people's happiness and shit. Yeah, and I, I was just like, wow, perfect game, so perfect. It uh, heals broken marriages and and cures cancer. Because, <laughs> like, <laughs> why not be hyperbolic there? Because it's funny. Because, uh, like, those sort of studies, they kind of, like, I mean, I guess they mean something, but, like, what what does it really mean? Nothing much more except that you can ego stroke that your game's better than Monkey Ball. Not good enough for me. True. Cause apparently Monkey Ball is not a pro social game. And it won't be just my ego that's getting stroked for that information. <laughs> Oh yeah, and then also Sonic the Hedgehog, because nobody in the Sunshine Hut can shut up about Sonic the Hedgehog. And that includes yeah. me. I kind of like talking about Sonic the Hedgehog. I, I was going to say this joke um in Sunshine Hut, but I... It, I just was, I didn't feel like being super rude about it, but I was like, what if we just had a dedicated channel for Sun, for Sonic <laughs> in, in the Sunshine channel? In the, I mean, in the Sunshine server. I think you made a joke about yeah, that. Yeah, probably. Probably did. Because with how many times people keep posting about it, it's like, at what point do we just make a channel for it? <laughs> Yeah, I like Monkey Ball too. Great game. The last time I played Monkey Ball, I tried getting Corvin to play it, and he was all like, Oh yeah, this sounds like a fun game. And then we played through, like, uh, Master Mode, and he's like, I fucking hate this game. I'm fucking done. And I'm like, no, let's just, let's just, just try again. And he's like, no. I did that when I was a little kid. Yeah. I got very upset yeah. with the one where you're in the half pipe, and it's like, the goal is moving up and down on the half pipe. I saw there was like some game mode where you could like play at the same time as other people, and I, that looked very fun. And I kind of want to do that at some point. Oh yeah, it's yeah, competition it's mode. Is that in, is that in Monkey Ball One or Two? It's, it's in Monkey Ball One. Josh, Josh. <laughs> what? Thirty years down the road from now, when we don't have anything else going on, let's make a because i know that people have basically ported super monkey ball deluxe the entirety with all the floors and everything into super monkey ball 2 so super monkey ball deluxe can be played on the gamecube which by the way we need to download that please um yeah i have that i have I that rom hack it's pretty means, nice um no I'll, I'll need to go see it but then you know what we need to do see how easily we could get uh get it so that way you could just play all 300 and he cuts out. Amazing. Cut out. No, I was saying, um, 
110 floors can be played in competition instead of just Super Monkey Ball 1's, I think, like, 107 or something. See, 30 years down the line, and even now I'm not invested in that. You know, there's actually, um, Monkey Ball mods. They have, like, custom courses and stuff. I know. I'm surprised nobody hears One about minute. the- I've been thinking of making a YouTube video that just goes over, like, a bunch of GameCube mods that nobody knows about. Like Duper Mario Yeah, like Duper. The best Mario Sunshine ROM hack. Wait, hey, hey, Wade, we're not- Wade. Whenever I get more Super Mario Eclipse stuff done, um, remind me about those Super Monkey Ball all mods, okay? Because I've always wanted to play them, but I keep forgetting, but I got too much on my plate to worry about right now, so I gotta make sure I take care of those first. Do you know about the remake of, uh, Touch and Roll on, uh, the GameCube version? I... No, I did not know that. Yeah, I have played Billy Hatcher a little bit. Uh, I played to, like, the second world, I think, and then stopped. Um, it was pretty good, though. I'll probably end up playing through it someday. Not anytime soon, but probably someday. I think I may have said the wrong, uh... Oh, you know what does annoy me about Billy Hatcher, though? No, wait, it is touching. Um, is that when you walk backwards, he, like, drops the egg? Like, why couldn't there just be a drop the egg button? It just kind of... You just can't walk backwards in that game, which is kind of something that you do a lot in video games. Aside that weird game choice, it's pretty alright. It's a pretty alright game. Big Tree, what is your favorite game choice game? Choose wisely. Yeah, if it's not SA2, There's he ran- he- he, 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 uh... <laughs> every Sonic fan's favorite GameCube game. Obviously the correct choice is Sunshine. Yeah. You mean the first Sonic Adventure, or what do you mean? Oh, is it pretty buggy? I haven't noticed any bugs, but then again, I only played to like the second world, so... Yeah, that's literally what he said, Wade. Stop being redundant! Oh my god! Hey, I love being redundant. You're wasting- you're wasting my ears. I'm sorry, your ears are so overused, I'm wasting them. I, c I could never be the, the chow guy. If I'm gonna spend hours grinding at something, it's gonna be in a game like Stardew Valley or Minecraft. I have done it with a glitch that makes it somewhat more bearable. But yeah. In the Dreamcast version, you can use the VMU to actually like play mini games with your chow, and that helps level them up. But that doesn't exist in the GameCube version. Didn't they have the the GBA thingy? The tiny chow garden. Yeah, that, they had that too. But I don't know. Yeah, I guess it, it doesn't really have one for the uh, PC version. There's so many cool ideas for chows that'll never be a thing. I mean, there's already, uh, like, mods for SA2 that add, like, animals to, uh, other games. You can have a bee chow or a baby bug chow. It's pretty cool. Yeah, the infinite money glitch is also good. 
although it does also take a while because you have to reset constantly. Dang, I can't wait till somebody hacks the universe's uh, source code and inf invents the infinite money cheat code. That'll be the day. If only. But you know, if we do that, uh, money will become less valuable. Not, not as long as you're the only one with the cheat code. True. That's like just being Bill Gates. You're just so rich you don't have to care about things. <laughs> yeah. and it doesn't inflate as long as you're hoarding all the money. Yeah. Yeah, Double Dash is my favorite too. Favorite GameCube game or favorite Mario Kart game? Mario Kart. Okay. I couldn't call Double Dash my favorite Mario Kart game because it just doesn't have like a lot of courses. But I like its mechanics more than any other Mario Kart game. Yeah, yeah cause it has like two characters and if you do the team up mode you can have player two punch people. Which is just kind of funny. Yeah. And also just a cool mechanic. Yeah, it has yeah. a lot of- it has a lot of charm. And... Yeah. And you can play as Phoebe. But honestly, after the DLC comes out for 8, it'd be hard to top it. But can you play as Phoebe in Mario Kart 8? It's <laughs> true. Does not have sunshine rep, do, does not equal good game. Yes, exactly. The perfect game with the perfect rep. Ah. Uh... Oh, that's your favorite game? Okay. How come? Don't mind me asking. Clearly, he lied. You lied? Oh, actually, um, speaking of Double Dash, Big Tree Cannon, did you hear that the, um, there was a, uh, or, uh what is it called? It's not a beta build, it's a, what is it? A debug, debug build? build. Yeah. yeah, the debug build of Double Dash got leaked. Yep, and I'm pretty sure it came with, like, a, a symbol map or, uh, like, an alpha file or something like that, so. Yeah, double Dash body is on the move. I mean, not only that, but Super Mario Sunshine and Double Dash, at least according to Yoshi 2 anyway, share a lot of similarities in file types and stuff and everything, so being able to easily reverse engineer Double Dash could also help us uh, more easily reverse engineer um, Super Mario Sunshine by no, proxy. No, yeah, that's very true, because it uses, like, BMDs and everything, yeah. Yes, big- thank you, Big Tree Cannon. That is the best- that is definitely the best GameCube game. Aside sunshine, aside sunshine. I have to preface that. But uh, a hat in time, which is definitely a GameCube game. <laughs> yeah, actually, you're right. Hat in time is my favorite game for the Nintendo Dodecahedron. The Nintendo game Dodecahedron. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I mentioned this um before to people, but... We, me and Josh and uh, the, whole, the rest of the team have been doing a playthrough of Hat in Time. And, um... I find it very odd that the developers, like, made this game that's, like, super inspired by, like, early 2000s 3D platformers and not, like, 90s 3D platformers. And yet, when they did the, like, limited edition box art, they made it N64 box art and not, like, GameCube or PS2. I was just kind of like... Why, though? It doesn't even vibe with, like, N64. Like, everything about Hat in Time screams GameCube, PS2, Xbox, you know? It doesn't scream N64. It doesn't, like, at all. Doesn't scream PS1. Doesn't scream Dreamcast. Yeah, exactly. Does Dreamcast even count? Well, like, okay, actually... Question: Does is Dreamcast in there with the GameCube generation in your mind, or is it in there with the the N sixty four in your mind? It's like the first. Dreamcast is definitely GameCube era. Okay. Yeah. 
like the first yeah because i i would say that too less because of like the specs of the thing and more just because i feel like the games that were on it vibe way more with like 2000s media than than like 90s i mean specs wise the um the dreamcast was like way ahead of its time um because even though like in 1998 when sonic adventure came out and graphically it kind of looked on par with some nintendo 64 games and stuff that are coming out like ocarina of time um by the end of the dreamcast life cycle um it was which you know started in like 1998 and everything um by the end of its very short-lived life in 2001 it was already putting out games that were graphically and like you know like a gameplay wise and speaking on par with like the best-selling gamecube games like i like sonic adventure 2 battle which is literally just a straight port of the dreamcast song because it's like when they ported Sonic Adventure 1 to the GameCube, they had to give it, like, a huge graphical facelift and everything to make it even somewhat, like, passable on the GameCube. Sonic Adventure 2 did not need any graphical touch-ups whatsoever, although I think they did update Sonic's model a little bit, just to kind of, like, change the stuff. Like they gave him, like, slightly rounder ears. Just, you know, like, random stuff like that that doesn't really matter. But, um... And like like Sonic Adventure 2 didn't need any updating when it came to uh to the GameCube. So it's like I think that's a testament to what the Dreamcast was capable of pulling off. Um But it's like Sega was definitely ahead of the market when it came to what they were capable of doing. Because it's like when Nintendo had the Nintendo 64 and Sony had the PlayStation 1. Here was Sega over here with the Dreamcast, you know, releasing like fucking Shenmue and stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, because it was like um, before the Nintendo 64 even came out, and I think the PlayStation had just hit the market, uh, Sega had already, yeah, I mean, like it was already dying, it was dead on arrival, but they had already released the Sega Saturn which was already fully capable of doing 3D graphics and stuff and everything and looked better than Nintendo 64 and was more graphically stable than PlayStation 1. And then even going further back and stuff, it's like Sega released the Genesis ahead of um, Nintendo releasing the, um, the, the Super Nintendo. So it's like Sega was ahead for a while there, but their, their consoles just kind of didn't really do it. And so that's why they had to, you know, drop out of making consoles and stuff. I do like how long they stuck you know, you know, the Genesis. It's like introducing the Genesis, but you plug a toaster into it and it plays a uh, hedgehog game. I do I do like all the like fancy little peripherals for for the console. It's all funky. Um Also also Sega was definitely right in predicting that um disc-based gaming was uh, like a the next big step after standard like a uh, cartridge, you know. And then Nintendo was like, "Nah, fam, we're going back to cartridges." <laughs> yeah. yeah. I I I just kind of like cartridges better, you know. I forget are are di our discs. Um, really I forget are discs still the the best thing of storage, or is it back to the carts again? I think I think discs are better for storage, but cartridges are significantly more durable and stuff. Um, but also discs are significantly cheaper to manufacture oh, than cartridges, yeah, that's why is, and that's yeah. the reason. That's the reason why Nintendo is the only ones doing cartridges right now, um, because manufacturing discs is just so much cheaper, and so you know that's what Sony and Microsoft are still on right now, um. But uh, oh, shit. I was gonna, I was gonna say something. Oh yeah, I love it because Sega is like very secretly and sneakily trying to get their foot back into the door with making consoles again. Uh, because they've released um the the Genesis Mega Drive Mini, and then uh, they did the Game Gear Minis a while back, and apparently now they're working on um uh like a, um a, a Mega Drive Two Mini based off of like um the model 2 versions of the the genesis and mega drive um and apparently it's going to include a lot more games and stuff and there's even going to be like um like an extra little sega cd thing that you can hook up to just like in the old days and stuff and there's and like coming with it is going to be a miniature um 
I think like actually GameCube disc sized. Uh, little, it, it does. It won't have anything on it. I'm pretty sure, but it's gonna be like a GameCube disc sized disc that has Sonic CD art printed on it that you can put inside the little the little disc tray on the miniature Sega CD. Which is the cutest little thing ever, but I love it because Sega is being all sneaky, trying to pretend like they're just re releasing some nostalgic throwback items, but I'm sitting over here with my tinfoil hat on, thinking that they're trying to get back into seeing if they can uh, get back into the console business I again. I have, like, zero reason to get into the console business. But yeah, the, I mean, the, the mini Oh yeah, but this is, cool. fucking, this, is, this is fucking Sega we're talking about, Wade. They're releasing Sonic Frontiers. Anything is possible. <laughs> I I, do, wow, I don't think that's possible, game, but <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> the most out of left field possible thing: releasing a Sonic game. Gasp. Yes. I think I'm. Time yeah, time. I think I'm gonna go to bed. Cause. Whoa. I. Like I would love to do some more sunshine stuff, but Josh has taken his time with Pat and Time because Pat and Time's a fun game and you don't want to miss content. And we were gonna do this probably a couple hours earlier, but you know, Hat and Time takes priority because it's a cool game and it's fun. <laughs> I may end up having rail editing done when it comes to the like GUI itself tonight. And if that's the case, I'll push it up. And then technically speaking, you could use Junior's Toolbox to edit stages. Yeah. Pretty much the same. There's Camping editor. There's still the camera editor though, and I really can't do that, so I have the renderer. Going. True, yeah. Um, like uh, just looking here from what I can immediately, immediately see, see uh, uh, the project, project viewers, viewers is usable. Scene hierarchy is usable, of course. Selected properties is usable. The rail list is usable. The rail editor I actually need to get rid of that because it's pointless now because of the selected properties being generic. BMG editors, of course, usable. We all know that that thing is golden. And then, although there's still some extra stuff out there to it. I have and my then, joy back again. Then, that'll be um, about how she transforms on all the autumn to love and use my RT nemesis a little bit. Who is in like, the hot teenage boyfriend? DRM editor. That's yeah, he can't see younger sister uh, in the face, and now she has plenty of knows probably a black eye. And then demo editor, that's the camera editor thing, um, which I can't do until the scene editor is up. Data viewer is usable. Scene renderer. Oh yeah, in case people obviously is haven't waiting. seen Junior's toolbox, I'll do this before I go to bed. I'll, let me sh now I have your screen actually on the stream. But yeah, that's what Junior's Toolbox looks like. Yeah. It has a bunch of windows that are all dockable. And it's like very dynamic. It's very user nice. I wouldn't even say friendly. It's very complex because it's sunshine. But <laughs> user nice. it's user nice. But yeah, it's... User nice. Yeah. I'm never going to forget that. There's nothing friendly about hacking Mario Sunshine. But... It's at least nice now. But yeah, this is um Josh's baby for the past couple months. He's been working on it. 
Anyways, yeah, I'm gonna head out. Alright, we'll see you, boy. Yep, yep. Good night. Uh, where's the stop Good night, Wade. button? Oh, there's just. I'm dumb. It's right oh, there. Um...